In this video, we're going to be covering how to install the software from a download link. Now, there may be a chance you have it on a disk. That's not usually something you're going to get too often. So most of the time, it's going to come as a download link. But if you get it on a disk, all you have to do is insert the disk into the disk drive on your computer and then wait for it to pop up and run the auto run option. Otherwise, what I've done is I've downloaded the software. I have it sitting here on my desktop. I've just moved it from my downloads folder to my desktop. And I'm just going to double click on it and that's going to start the installation process. And here it is. It's going to prepare the install shield wizard for version 34. From here, we're just going to hit next. After we hit next, we can check out the end user license agreement. You can scroll through this, see all the rules of using the software. If you do not accept, you can pretty much hit cancel right now because it's not going to let you move on. Otherwise, you say, I accept the terms of the license agreement and then go next. Right here, we have two different install types. So I'm going to start on the custom install because I'm actually going to run a complete install. But if you're using custom, when you hit next, you get to choose first what gets installed. So you can tell it whether to install just Bobcad, whether you want it to install the license server if you're using network licensing or the NC editor. In my case, I could say, let's install both of those and then go next again. Now, right here, it'll ask you your destination folder. Now, the difference between the custom setup and the complete setup is the complete setup is going to pick the C drive pretty much by default. This is going to allow you to go in and browse and potentially pick a different location on your computer to save that. So if you have a different drive you want to save it to, make sure to save it to that drive right here, right now. So I'm just going to go ahead and go back until I can get back to my complete install and then go next. Right here, all I have to do then is hit install. And we're just going to wait and eventually the screen is going to pop up with a little loading bar and it's going to load its way through the system. And there it is. Now the software is fully installed. You just have to wait for it to go through its process. And then when you're done, you say finish. And there is the icon. It should put it on your desktop. I've moved it over here. And then from there, we can just double click to start the software. Now, when the software installs for the first time, the first thing that's going to come up is it's going to ask you for the registration wizard. So there's three options on here. The first one is request a demo license, which will give you a demo of the software. Now, the way this works is you hit next. And then right here, you'll enter all your information, whether or not you want to be signed up for the newsletter. And then you can request a demo license. Now, what's going to happen is they're going to send an email with this license file attached to it. It'll say BC license file. You're going to take that file and you're going to download it from the email. And then what I recommend is just putting it on your desktop. Now, after you have that done, you're going to hit next. And right here, you're just going to say open. And that's the name of the file right there, the BC license response file. And so you're just going to navigate to your desktop, find the file. I don't have one on here currently. And you're just going to hit open and it's going to load up a demo version of the software. You'll pretty much be free of it for the next 30 days or so. Now, the other option is to register manually via email. Now, if you register manually via email, then you're going to hit next and you're going to enter in your license ID and password. After you enter your license ID and password, it's going to generate a file that you are then going to email to support at bobcad.com. And from there, they're going to be able to register it for you. Otherwise, the most common way and even if it means setting up the computer online for just a few minutes, I would recommend using the register automatically via the internet here. So from here, I'll just go next. And with this one, all it's going to do is ask for the license ID and password. Now, the invoice that you receive from us should look just like this little page here. And down at the bottom left-hand corner, you'll see a license ID and password. Now, you may have multiple. That's for your multiple different licenses. Those can all go on different computers. But if you only have one, you're going to use your license ID and your password to register the software. So I'm just going to go ahead and put my license ID in right there. And then I'm going to go ahead and grab my password. And I'm going to put this in as well. Now, when you look at your password, it does have capitals. Might as well copy that. So make sure you type in your password with the capitals as it says on the invoice. And after you have that information entered in, we can go ahead and hit next. 
And right here, if everything works, you'll have a license activation success option. You'll hit OK. And we're just going to wait. Right here, it's going to show us our name, our company, our license ID, and our customer ID. Now, you want to know those two options, especially if you have multiple licenses. Now, the customer ID is just something you should have just in case you ever have to call. It's the easiest way for us to know who you are. But the license ID tells us which computer this license is on. So if you do have five computers or so with a license on it, make sure to write down which computer has which license because if the computer goes down and you're unable to deauthorize the software before it goes down, we're going to have to manually deauthorize it on our end. We have no problem doing that. The problem is if we don't know which license to deauthorize, then it can lead to problems with other licenses. So make sure to mark that down. And when you're all done, hit finish and then give it another second. And the software is going to fully load for us. And there it is. Now we're inside of version 34. And that concludes the video on the installation and registration for version 34.